Blocks, blocks, blocks everywhere. Let's be honest about it. You pretty much can't hide from the fact that there are lots and lots of blocks available for Gutenberg. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the big update to Cadence Blocks 3.0 and what it actually brings to the table. Good news is, I'm only going to be using the free version of the plugin so you can follow along with everything that I'm going to cover. Now, before we move on, let me just quickly say this is sponsored by Cadence, but I'm going to give you no opinions. I'm simply going to demonstrate how the functions work, and then you can make an informed decision for yourself if you want to check it out. Okay. Now, the most obvious visual change that you will see in Cadence Blocks when you log in is the right-hand panel. No longer do we have that one single long old list of all different options that kind of had so many things in there, it was a little bit overwhelming. Now it's been streamlined into a much more logical place to visit. You'll see we have Layout, Style and Advanced. These three different tabs have all the settings you need to get access to for any of the different blocks you have inside Cadence Blocks. Now this is all context sensitive, so at the moment we're looking at a row layout. If we change this to section, you'll see we get different options. We change it to advanced text, again, different options. But what you'll notice is we consistently have general, style, and advanced. So everything is laid out in a much more logical fashion. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look. Let's select our row layout one more time, and you'll see underneath layout, we've got all the controls for layouts. So we can set, for example, the number of columns. We can set the gutter. We can change things over into mobile, desktop, and tablet view, so we can see and set up all the parameters we need there, and all the other options are available. Jumping over into style, and this is where all the styling options, so the colors, the typography, all those settings you would expect to have in the relevant different blocks that you have as part of Cadence. And finally, we go into advanced, and you can see inside there, we now have the advanced options, those things like our padding, our margin, structure settings, and so on. All the options that you should need are inside you. And coming over from previous versions of Cadence Blocks, you're going to find most of the options, if not all of the options, are going to look pretty much the same. However, there are some big noticeable changes underneath the hood that change the way in which you work with Cadence Blocks. But we'll come on to that as we go through this entire video. So let's dig a little deeper into these panels and let me show you some of the key things that have changed. Let's go and select our advanced text as a good starting point. Come over to the right hand side, open up the styles panel and you'll notice that we have a different set of font sizes. We have small, medium, large up to 3XL. So you can work with these global values to have consistency throughout everything you create with the sections, with its headings, buttons, all those kinds of things. You can still override these if you want to. If you want to get in and manually control exactly what size you want something to be, you can bypass these sizes, simply click on the custom size options, and inside there you can now go ahead and set whatever value you want, and you'll notice we can change as well the things like pixels, M's, REMs, VW, and so on. Whatever is applicable to the relevant different block that you have selected at any given time. So if you want to change the size of this, we say we want to set this to be something like 92, we could easily change that inside there. But you have both options available to you. Now, these options to set global values or override them is applicable in lots of different parts of the overall interface when it comes to Cadence Blocks. If, for example, we come into the row layout and you want to edit something like the row gutter, you'll see again we've got things like small, medium, large, and so on, and we have the options to manually override those and set them to whatever we want. So it's nice to see that we have those new changes to have global and easily overridable settings inside our layouts. Now, we're not limited to just having those with typography and things like that. You can, for example, if we come into section, come into our advanced. And we've got padding. Now, there's a couple of ways we could work with padding. We can interact with it directly inside the editor itself, or we can actually use these values. So you can see, once we click inside, we'll now get these pa padding options or margin options, depending upon what we select. And as we set these, you'll find it doesn't give us a numeric value. It gives us the same as we've just seen with the typography. You're small, medium, large, and so on. So again, even the padding, the margin, all those elements are still using that same technology, using CSS grid, using the same kind of global sizing to help scale everything. So if you change any of those initial values, everything that uses that value will change accordingly. So it's a nice way of making sure you have consistency throughout all of your design and very, very quick to implement changes across the entire board. 
Now, as always, you can still set these on an individual basis, or we can link them together and we can go ahead and you can see the interface changes, but it still uses the same technology, which is the small, medium, and large, and so on. And it even tells you when you use this option, the number of pixels that have been set with that specific value. So if you like working at pixel values and you still want to harness this new way of working, at least you can see exactly what you're setting. The other thing that's really nice, and you can see it straight away, once I hover over any of these settings, you'll see it shows me a visual representation of of that margin, paddings, whatever, where it's being applied, how it's being applied, the size of it. I can see it all visually on screen as I'm making these changes. So these are little quality of life changes that really do make working with this so much simpler and easier, and like I say, nice and visual. And the same thing goes for margins. If we connect the margins together, you can see we can adjust those, and again, we get the visual representation and all the information inside the editor itself, so we can see exactly what value it is, how we're changing it and see it visually on screen being represented by these green bars. Pretty cool to see that you have these nice visual ways of working. And this is kind of where tools like Cadence Blocks now are starting to elevate way beyond what we were used to seeing with earlier blocks and making them so much more like we expect to see inside page builders that we've kind of become accustomed to. Nice little sort of quality of life things that I think really do make working with it so much easier and more visual. Now, I've been using Cadence Blocks for quite a long time on the WP Tuts website, and there's been a couple of things that are a little bit annoying. And thankfully, a lot of these have been addressed in this latest update. Now, one of the things that we used to find was a bit of a kind of weird problem was when you wanted to move the position of columns. So, for example, if we take a look at this layout, you can see we've got two sections, your left and your right-hand side. Now, all we need to do is select the section that we want, and you'll see that we now have these horizontal arrows that allow us to move left or move right. So all we need to do is click, and now that easily moves that over. Click again to put it back, and you can do this if you have multiple columns. It's very, very easy to work with to move these back and forth and not have that really frustrating and annoying feature where you try to drag it around and you don't drag the right thing around, and it just become a bit of a pain. This is a nice, simple, visual way of being able to address that without having all those kind of fuss and annoyances. So what you need to do is, when you select anything like this, for example, we're inside the section, we just need to click to select the parent, and then we can use these arrows to just easily scooch back and forth. Or obviously you can use the list selector on the left-hand side to choose exactly which section that you want, and then just use that option to move things around. Kind of in keeping with what we used to see in when it comes to Working with Gutenberg, where you want to move things up and down, this now just allows you to move things left and right. So, pretty cool, and a nice little, again, quality of life update. Now, stick it with the whole rows and grids kind of philosophy. There's been a new update in how this works as well. Let's go ahead and add a new row in. So, we're going to add, insert after, and we'll just add a row. And we can get to choose what kind of row layout we want. So let's go for something simple like this three column layout. And we now have what we've kind of used to be seen. We can easily come in in between and we can resize these, which again is one of those little quality of life that I really like how easy this is to be able to adjust any of these visually just by simply dragging them around. Now coming over to the right hand side, you'll notice that we now have a lot more options available to us, including some more complex layout options. Previously, we've kind of had these sort of side by side columns and that's kind of all we've had. But now you'll see that we've got more options available. We may want to have 100% and 250 percent below, but still retaining that three column layout. And you can see, we just selected, and then we've got the column gutters, again, using those options for the global sort of values, the small, medium, and large, and so on. So you want to increase the spacing between any of the columns or any of the rows, or you want to manually override this to set exactly what you want. You can set those values inside there as well. So you have all those controls, and you can very easily adjust the layouts of these simply by selecting these predefined layouts. You can also switch between the different responsive modes and set up how you want those to interact with the overall design as you finish it. But you can also come in, and let's go and set this back to three, Increase the size of this, and now you'll see that we get a different set of options. So it intelligently looks at how many columns you have and then gives you the options that you may want to use to set things up. Again, we're using sort of CSS grid to make sure this all kind of works nicely. You can customize it, and then you can easily come in and just choose exactly what you want to insert in any of these different sections. 
Let's go ahead and set this to something like five. And again, you see now we have a different set of options. We can stack them vertically or horizontally. Bring that down to something like two. And again, we get slightly different variations. So you should have more than enough inside you to create almost any kind of variation you want. And if you want to adjust the values of these, depending upon what layout you select, you can see we can still come in and we can manually adjust these to get different layouts completely. So we can tweak this and fine tune it, or we can use any of these prefect values, and we can use the column and gutters and all those kinds of settings inside you. So again, another one of those things that just makes working with it so much quicker and easier. And this is something that I can really appreciate. After working with earlier versions, it's nice how quick and easy it is to be able to use this to create more complex layers. And the nice thing is we're not limited to only using this with the Cadence theme. You can use this pretty much with any theme that you want to. So don't feel like these are limitations that you have to only use with the relevant theme. You don't. It's pretty flexible, whatever you want to do with it. Now there's some extra features included as part of Cadence Blocks 3.0. There's one that I think is quite interesting. Let's go ahead and select this camping. And let's say that our website is not just about camping, it's about hiking, kayaking, all those kinds of outdoor sports and things like that. Well, having just word camping kind of limits what people might think you actually sell. So what we can do is we can select the text that we want, we can click the More option, and we can choose Typed Text. And as its name suggests, this will create a kind of typewriter effect. So what we've got is the first word in this example is camping. So we can leave that as it is. And what we can do now is we can add in extra strings. So we can say hiking, we'll add a string. Kayaking, add another string. And skiing. And there we go. And then we got the speed settings underneath. We can choose how we want this to sort of be set up. So let's just make that longer, for example. You can change your backspace speed, all those kinds of things. You can shuffle it. You can smart backspace. There's a lot of options. You can loop this if you want to. And then once we finished, you will see we get this kind of typewriter effect. So this now gives us the ability to have multiple different values on whatever text we've just selected and have something that's a little bit A, animated to grab people's attention, but also opens up to use a similar amount of space, but to expand what content you have. Probably just a little bit of a niche use case, but it's something that I think is quite useful and nice to see little features like this have been added in to Cadence Block 3. Now, those are the kind of main things that I wanted to show you, but there's an awful lot more going on underneath the hood that you may not be aware of. First of all, variables. So we're using variables now, like we've just seen, to set up the small, medium, large, and so on. So we're not limited to setting up pixel values, we can use the variable settings. It's also using CSS clamp for the responsive mode. So if you don't understand CSS clamp, the options are available. I'll link to this document in the description below. So if you want to take a look at this to see everything that's been covered in this update, including links to things like understanding CSS clamp and so on, I'll link that, like I say, in the description. Check it out. It's very, very useful. There's also some updates to the copying and pasting options. So if you've never used the copy and paste, it's insanely easy. All you need to do is select what you want. In this example, this text, select it. You'll see you have this option now for copy paste styles. Click copy your style, and then simply highlight the next block of text that you want and paste your style. Same goes for buttons or pretty much any element you want as part of your design. So again, one of those really super simple things, but just speeds up the whole process of creating and duplicating content inside your designs. Now, before I wrap this up, there's one thing that I'm sure if you have Cadence Blocks 2. Point whatever installed and you're using it, you may be concerned that moving over to 3 may cause some issues, but it is fully backward compatible. So if you've set things up using the older version of Cadence Blocks and you want to update to version 3.0, you can do it knowing that the whole compatibility is there. You may need to clear your cache on your server and refresh a few bits and pieces, but just make sure that you have a backup just in case, but it is fully backwardly compatible and therefore you shouldn't have any issues if you want to update to the latest version. And that's what I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully it's demonstrated some of the key new changes and updates that have come to Cadence Blocks 3.0 and why you may want to consider taking a look at it for yourself. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is W. Pizzas. And until next time, take care.